Drink with James, episode 39. I was just asking Tim, how long has it been since we've been in this room filming like a classic one? Um, I think it's been a minute and next week we're actually fulfilling our manifest destiny and we're going to the west coast and we're going to Meadowood and we're shooting in the Napa Valley, thank God. I know you guys might have seen on Instagram that Tim and I were down in, in Georgia for the Southern Sea um, playing bocce a few weeks ago, which is great. I'm more of a croquet man uh, and Meadowood has one of the finest croquet fields on God's green earth. Um, so we're excited to try that out and you should be excited to see the content from it. Do you have your, do you have your white outfit ready for croquet? <sighs> do I have my white? Yeah, so you can only play croquet in all white, obviously. Um, I don't know that I do have it dialed in. You know, I have an all white outfit, obviously I'm not a Neanderthal, but I don't know if I love my look, so we, we might have to update it. Um, look, before we jump in today, I, I was reading this book and it had this very interesting point. It's talking about, you know, uh, it's, it's a book called The Effective Executive, a classic management book that you should potentially read. But the intro, they were basically saying that, you know, what you should be doing as an employee, as a leader, as an owner of your company, whatever it is that you are, is think about the thing that you are uncommonly good at and do that. Uh, too many people, I think, focus on their weaknesses and try and fix them, you know, um, instead of just like dialing in on what you look at the whole world and say like, what am I better at than most people and do that. And it, it, in general, as you line up your entire life and your career, if you focus on that thing and say, what am I uncommonly good at and continue to do that instead of trying to say like, oh, I'm really good at this thing, but I'm bad at finance. So I'm gonna study really hard and I'm gonna learn finance and I'm gonna like try and get a career in that. That makes no sense, right? Uh, I think as an influencer, you can think about that as well. There are things that you will be good at and there are things that you will not be good at. And some people are really good at video and they're great on camera, like myself. Um, and some people aren't. And I'm not saying you shouldn't try, but at some point you have to figure out what you're really good at and you need to focus on that. Uh, and you don't need to do everything. And I think that because what y'all do as influencers is so public, you feel a need to try everything and do everything. But a lot of times that just means everything gets watered down and it's a little crappier. So this year, you know, focus in on what you're good at, nail that. Once you've nailed that, then you can start to expand and you can bring in other people who are really good at other things to help you potentially expand. But in the beginning, you really need to focus on that one thing. We're gonna move on to questions. New Instagram photo sets, exciting, right? Also really fucking annoying because when you're trying to refresh your feed and the photo sets on the top, it just starts scrolling through the photo set instead of refreshing the feed. That's annoying, hopefully Instagram fixes that. But interesting uses for it. Well, let me just say like what's not interesting. I think I'm, I'm going to see a lot of people that have one really strong photo and three that they kind of like but aren't as strong and they're just gonna post all of them in a photo set. That is a bad idea. I would not do that. I think adding context is always really nice. Um, so I think they're gonna be really good for travel. You know, as an influencer, when you're traveling, you obviously have a lot more content but you can't post four times a day. We talked about training your audience, staying consistent, um, and I struggle with this as well. When you go on vacation, you have more photos, you wanna post them, right? Photo sets are gonna be awesome for that. You can post your one key image and then you can have nine more that kind of support it, that tell the story of that day. Um, which is similar to, I think, what a lot of people do in Insta stories right now, that's great. Um, I saw that you can also put video in, so that's kind of cool. So being able to have some stills from the day, but then also maybe a few videos, I think that will be really interesting. Um, I, I don't really think we need to see eight outfit photos in a set, you know? Um, I think that, you know, we had Erica on last week's show and she's great about being like full body outfit photo, detail, accessory. And she just does that over and over again. But if she did one post that had those three images in it, it wouldn't be as impactful. So. I would think about that. Think about the times when you need to create context and you need to tell a larger story and use the sets for that. I wouldn't use it super consistently, 
um, because people will just stop scrolling. Um, so you want it to be a little bit of a surprise uh, where people kind of get drawn into it. Um, but we're just starting to play with it. You know, it's a day old right now, uh, you know, eight days old or whatever when this video goes live. But um, it's, uh, it's something we'll be playing with and watching. We'll be watching the data to see how they do. Do they get more or less engagement? So we'll kind of update you guys in a month with anything interesting we find there. I haven't seen many good uses. Red Bull um, posted 10 photos the other day that was like a huge panorama. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, but I haven't seen anyone else do a really good job with it yet. But we're, we're only a, a, you know, a day in. Excuse me, brands are 100% looking at engagement. Now, you know, the question's a little choppy because they're not looking at engagement as reach but they're certainly looking at his engagement as a metric that they want to be healthy. I think in general, if you're a professional serious influencer, you want to just be balanced. You know, everything should make sense. Nothing should be out of place, right? If you have, um, you know, if you're focused on the blog and Instagram, let's say, and your blog gets a thousand visits a month and your Instagram has half a million followers, that's not balanced. That doesn't really make sense. You know, so in general, you want to be balanced. If you've got 10,000 followers, you should be getting, you know, whatever that like percentage is, probably 100 to 200 likes um, per photo and, and extrapolate that up. So you never want to fall outside of a range where people say like, oh, that's weird. Why is that so low? Um, but great engagement is 100% is always going to be a plus for you. Um, and if you have extraordinary engagement, I would say anything over 3 or 4% is, is quite high. That's something you should always lead with. Hey, I, only, I know I only have 25,000 followers, but I have a 6% engagement rate, which is you know, four times better than the, the average with most influencers, um, is how I would talk about it. Second part of the question is, if you have a photo with, and you have 20,000 followers and you get 6,000 likes, no. or sorry, you have a photo, you have 60,000 followers and it gets 6,000 likes, or you have 20,000 followers and it gets 10,000 likes, which one is more desirable as a brand? Um, I think if I'm a brand, the, the 6K with 60 is better. Um, end of the day, that's 40,000 more people that are potentially seeing that post. As your following grows, your engagement rate will go down naturally. You know, people don't feel as emotionally invested in what you do. They see you getting all of these likes and going on these trips and getting these clothes and they start to retract a little bit. They start to pull away and say like, oh, I don't need to like support this person as much. I don't. Even if I like this photo, he or she isn't going to see that. So what's kind of the point of me doing it? So it's natural for your engagement rate to fall. Um, so I wouldn't get too hung up on likes and say that, oh, I'm getting more likes than this person. My, and even though they have 50,000 more followers than me, my, I should be charging more. I should be more valuable to brands. That's not totally true, um, but it is something that can certainly sweeten the deal a little bit for you. I'm not really saying you shouldn't make money. I'm saying that making money shouldn't be your focus. There's a big, there's a big difference. Um, making money, taking paid deals, getting affiliate links, all those things, 100% do that. Make your money. What I was saying when I said if you're under 50K, you shouldn't focus on money, is that you shouldn't turn down deals that could help you grow, that could advance you in the industry, that could bring really great content to your blog because they're not paid. Um, your 100% your main focus should be growth. Uh, if money is your second focus, that totally makes sense, that's fine. Um, but it shouldn't be your main focus. And making $10,000 is awesome, but it's not gonna change your life. What will change your life is if you can get that 14,000 following up to 140 or 400,000. That will change your life, not the $10,000. So focus on growth. Make the money while you can on the side though. Look, that was easy guys. Um, we're out, so next one, we're gonna be out in Napa. Um, we're super excited to go to Meadowood. Uh, I think we'll, we'll probably get some fire. I'm gonna be drinking wine, which is gonna be a little bit different. Um, but you know, when in Rome, as it were. And continue to send the questions in. You guys have been awesome. I've been getting more and more questions. I love that this world is crazy and it's changing every day. So. There should be new questions every week, so keep hitting us with the questions, and thanks for watching. Cheers.